For a lot of people who have been watching me for a long time, you might remember that I used to be a streamer. And I used to really love streaming. Over three years ago, when I first started doing YouTube full time, if you asked me right then and there whether or not I would rather do Twitch streaming full time or YouTube videos, I would have told you Twitch streaming. Every single night for like four to eight hours. It was the thing I looked forward to in my day to jump on a live stream and hang out with my community. And today I'm going to tell you about how I went from being a streamer that just streamed to like one or two people to someone who streamed for hundreds of people. And inevitably it caused me to stop streaming altogether. And now it's been years since I've regularly live streamed. Another major reason why I'm making this video is because lately I've been thinking a lot about how much I miss that time in my life. And I never really had a chance online to really talk about how my streaming experience or my streaming career like ended pretty suddenly, I guess. And finally, I want to make this video because I am using it as a way to hopefully introduce myself back into streaming. I want to start streaming on the He Said Us channel, I think. And maybe I'm going to start doing You Cringe, You Smoke or something else on live streams. Uh, there's a lot of people who have been wanting You Cringe, You Smoke to come back. And I feel like it's hard to do without having an audience to bounce off of. And I really miss streaming. So I want to get more comfortable making videos, but also I want to go back to streaming and sort of just like start to build a small community. And he said us, even if it's not too many people, I think it would be fun so, you know, like see returning names and kind of dive back into having that like smaller community that I missed about like the live interaction between a creator and their audience. I feel like that is something that I got very disconnected from as I started doing YouTube full time and just started making videos as opposed to streaming. So let me know down below after you watch this video if you would like me to start streaming and what you'd like me to start streaming is you cringe, you smoke our best idea. We could do New Music Friday and listen to some new songs. I don't know. Maybe today I'll stream? I don't know. In April of 2020, I started making videos on YouTube. As I was going through my last semester of school in fall of 2020, I decided that I wanted to start live streaming. I started this by streaming to my YouTube channel with 300 subscribers and I played Dark Souls without a face cam or anything. Just me and a microphone and... Dark Souls in front of me, a video game that I had no idea how to play. And I did a couple sessions of this before I realized that it's kind of boring when you're streaming to zero people and you have nothing to say and you don't have a face cam because then if you're not talking, it's just you're just watching gameplay. Who's going to want to come watch? How am I supposed to get famous if I'm just streaming without a camera? You got to have a camera to be famous. That's what they told Dream before he took the mask off. So I lived in Nashville, Tennessee for the last semester of college and on Facebook Marketplace, I found a shitty webcam that someone was selling for $20 and I drove to a Target parking lot and I did like an under the table deal in the Target parking lot with a minivan mom who wanted to get rid of this webcam. And in September of 2020, as you can see here on the Nick is not green channel, I officially was live streaming Dark Souls now with face cam. And as you can see, it was some really invigorating live streaming going on. Danielle, dinner was good. So that's my sister-in-law who came in the chat is the one viewer who is watching me. Um, I was chewing directly into the microphone. Really high quality stuff here. <clears throat> A little phlegm in the old throat. Little phlegm in the old throat. This was Nick from four years ago, and I almost feel like I look exactly the same. I feel like when I look at old YouTube videos, I feel like I look a lot different. I think there's something about the ADHD Zoomer brain of streaming a game on your computer to nobody that is easier to focus on than just playing the game by yourself. And there would be a lot of times where I would go on and from the beginning to end of the stream, zero people would ever join. I would not say a single word to anybody. And so I continued streaming on this YouTube channel until I got one of my first very ever recurring viewers, which was a guy named Derek who kept coming in my chat. And I would play Dark Souls and talk to the one person, Derek, in my chat. And that would be my stream. And after a couple streams, he asked why I'm not streaming on Twitch. 
And as you can see here at the very end of September, I switched over from YouTube to Twitch and kind of did my first ever streaming. But the progression of streaming on Twitch and how many more random people would come into your stream and check it out, even if they wouldn't say anything, that was like the dopamine rush I needed to keep going. I would get on stream and talk to the one or two people who would actually chat out of you know the 10 average people that were in my chat but i started doing this every day and you can see the first day i streamed it might have only been two and a half hours but i slowly started to gain a little bit of an addiction to it and on saturday the first saturday i started streaming i streamed 13 hours i just would sit in my college house up in my room and hang out and play video games and it didn't really feel like i was exerting social energy because there's pretty much nobody there so the pressure was very low and i just kept playing dark souls and minecraft i think i think those were like the two main things that i would do and the thing about streaming when you're not streaming to a lot of people and especially when you have recurring people come in is that you remember viewers there are specific memories that are shared between you and your community and it felt like this tight knit group of friends who were actually all anonymous strangers online. And there, there was something comforting about that. And as a small streamer, the goal of bringing in more average viewers or finding ways to just get people who clicked on your stream by accident to just hit the follow button. It was like every single follow mattered for months. If you if you just hit the free follow button, a whole alert would pop up on my screen and I would do like a whole dance with sound effects and all this stuff. And so moving home to my parents place and going back to streaming as much as I wanted to, you can see I went from having only 7.5 average viewers to 10. And then suddenly in the month of February, I was doing my best streaming and was getting about 21 average viewers. And for me, numbers like this were very exciting. It happened over the span of a, f a few months. It felt like every stream I was slowly bringing more and more people in. I would finish the stream and get on Discord with my friend Derek from earlier, and we would go over every single stat that was on the screen and talk about, you know, how crazy it was that the, the chat hit 30 viewers at one point in the night and that there were so many people in the chat and it felt like the stream was really turning into something big. Yeah. We're going crazy on the night stream. We're going crazy with my long peen. I wish I didn't say that. So you, as you can see, I did a lot of stuff that I it's hard for me to go back and watch. So I don't know if people remember when I made videos in this room, but then my parents told me to move my crap out of the guest room and put it in the basement. First time on Twitch and watching YouTube vids for a while. Thank you, thank you. So it's so weird watching clips of me just doing what I did for hours. There was so much footage of me online. I was constantly on camera and you can see the back of the office in my parents' basement. Um, and this is where I was for a, a while. Still not really sure what I was gonna be doing by this point. This was in April of 2021. So this was like, kind of right around the time I put out my first commentary video with Danny and things slowly started to blow up. But I still had my little Twitch community of like 20 however many people. One of the big things that I did while in that first office streaming was I did a game show for my Twitch stream chat. Hello everybody watching and welcome to the first ever official Nick is not greens survivor. As you can see, I would I would tell anyone who was in my chat who wanted to be a part of it to who to get in the chat and slowly people would get out every single turn but with random games that i do and i remember that i hyped this thing up so much and was so excited to do it and put so much time into it and my brother was in the other room watching and it was like the most people i ever had in my chat there were like 30 people in there and i remember walking out of the room and my brother came out of his room and we were like whoa how are there so many people watching my stream i felt like a streaming star running this game you can see there's derek right there who um not only continued to stay with my twitch chat but he's now one of my best friends and we still play video games now together and he might join me when i start streaming again to be maybe my color commentator but as YouTube started to blow up and the commentary thing became more and more popular with my YouTube channel, um, so did 
the people who would show up to my stream. I went from having my small community of about 20 people per stream to almost immediately jumping to 72 average viewers, then a couple days later 108 average viewers, and after that 127, 143. I remember when my YouTube channel was first blowing up, it happened so fast, the time between me having 10,000 subscribers to 100,000 subscribers was just over the span of like a month. And so I would go onto my Twitch channel and I would be like, oh, today we're doing the 10,000 subscriber special stream celebration. And then the next night it would be like, oh, we're doing the 20,000 subscriber stream celebration. And then the next night was the 30,000. And it just like kept on going and I kept returning back to stream with more and more energy about just how many people were interested in seeing what I loved doing and wanted to be a part of this community. And at the time, this was exactly what I always wanted. This was an indication that streaming full time was something that I could very well do, especially because I was putting over 100 hours in the whole month just in to doing this. So I kept making YouTube videos and I kept shouting out my Twitch channel and every week more and more people would come to watch what we had to do in our channel and that community grew a lot bigger. And even though a lot of those same people stayed from before, it was slowly starting to get filled with more and more strangers that I couldn't really keep track of as much. And this is kind of why I wanted to talk about this today and get to this part of the video is because it feels like the sad reality of streaming is that every streamer wants to blow up and every streamer wants their community to become bigger and bigger. But what I didn't realize was that all of those people I knew, those 20 average people that I knew every you know name of and I would welcome them into the stream and I would say bye to them when they leave, those people who have spent so much time and energy participating in my community and being a part of what I love doing, they were suddenly, without warning, flooded by all of these strangers who were new to my YouTube channel that didn't have the context of my past on streaming and my community and how we did things because you really cultivate this thing where everybody is kind of on the same page. But people don't really talk about just how different it is streaming to a small community versus streaming to hundreds and thousands of people. Of course, it's a big shift, but to me, looking back, it's practically two different things. You go from talking to these people who are basically your internet friends and all of a sudden, it's less like it's me hanging out with a bunch of internet friends and it's more like I am the leader and head of this big group of people who I have to rally together and, and entertain, I guess. Back in the day, you wanted other people in the Twitch chat because they would talk to each other. People would have conversations, you would have discussions as a group, but now with streaming, you're talking to hundreds of people and you're picking out single people in the chat and you can't have a back and forth with one person in the chat. You have to continually be reading things and scanning the chat and trying to communicate to the people watching in the best way you can and to maintain that engagement becomes a very tiring thing to do. And looking back at that change, I didn't realize how much it was going to affect this thing that I loved so much, this community of people that I, that I had built, that had become friends, even in the Discord chat I had, it was now flooded with all of these new people. And of course, I was so grateful for that. You know, this video isn't for me to whine about how I got all the viewers I wanted, but more so to talk about how the love that I had for streaming, a lot of it was because of the sh very slow growth and the small intimate community that I had. I didn't love streaming because I loved all of these people just giving me attention. Now, of course, that was a still a great thing. And at the time, I was not mad about that at all. I did not really see a problem in everything blowing up. But no, I continue to stream. And in April, the month where I actually began doing YouTube full time, I was streaming to 245 average people. And yeah, over the next few months, I was doing the numbers and the subscriptions of a full time streamer. And it was my dream but it didn't really feel the same as it felt before i wasn't jumping on discord with derek after these streams and going oh my god this one has 300 average viewers tonight and we got this many followers i wasn't praising every single follow that came to me i was barely praising every subscription that came to me because there were too many <laughs> i was too good at what i was doing i was so good but no the popularity 
so quickly of YouTube not only affected the way I felt about YouTube, which is something I can always talk about in the future, but more than that, it completely gutted the community and I guess the culture that was was created in the community that was my stream. And it was a lot harder and more tiring over time to continue doing it the same way. And looking back, it started to make me sad that a lot of the people who would come to my chat every day to hang out and who would talk to the other people in the community, basically in the span of a month, didn't have that community anymore because it was filled with a lot of people who were just fans of me because I knew other people or who found my YouTube and were just fans of that. And it went from me playing video games to me trying to find the things that would bring the most people to want to watch the stream and that would get the most people to subscribe. And it became a job, which I guess, you know, who, who would have seen that coming? That once the thing becomes a job, it stops being fun. That's like very obvious. But to me at the time, it wasn't. And this summer was the same summer that I started doing the baddie SMP with all the other commentary people. And I started recording videos on stream for my second channel. And things became more about, okay, what can I do to create content while I'm here on stream so I can use it for YouTube? And it's hard because I felt like streaming was the most connected you could feel to an audience, kind of the realest you could get without going out into the real world. And coming back to something every day and having people who are there hanging out with you too is, I don't know, a connection that I feel like helps me stay motivated more than YouTube is because YouTube you kind of create something and then you go through the editing process and then you upload it and wait for people to watch it and there's no automatic back and forth to what you're doing at all and a lot of times the back and forth and bouncing off of other people or chatters is what makes the thing interesting in the first place i remember when i first started having hundreds of people in my chat i would start doing something called I think it was like cult hour and every night we would turn off the lights and I'd put a candle, I'd light a little candle and we would talk in the chat about things and advice that people needed and questions they had and the chat would kind of discuss these different problems and pieces of advice that other chatters were asking for and it was kind of the last semblance of like a tight-knit community that I had before it became too much to read the chat scrolling by. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I want to cry. I'm so sad. I want to cry. I... And I think by the time that I moved to Los Angeles, like a year and a half ago, almost two years ago at this point, which is insane, I... I just lost the love that I had for streaming. I wasn't doing you cringe you smoke like I was doing when I lived in Illinois. I, I wasn't hanging out in here for hours. This office feels and continues to kind of feel so like vapid and, and has a lot of weird memories in it. Because when I moved here, it became very uncomfortable to create content. I didn't feel like I was at home or that I was in this like comfy little space. I felt like I was in this big tall ceiling ass white office with sound treatment all over it so it's just like eerily professional i guess and that felt not as fulfilling to me it, it was harder for me to hang out and also not get stressed out by the numbers because at a certain point it got to the point where i was getting so anxious about how many people were watching the twitch chat because you would go from talking about stuff online or going from playing Minecraft and then I would decide to play some other boring ass game and go back to something like Dark Souls and suddenly half the chat leaves. And you watch in real time as people become less interested in what you're doing. And it is kind of also the first feeling you get from being a YouTuber where you went from putting out videos that you were just excited to talk about and suddenly you're making videos for the algorithm and you're becoming stressed and anxious when your videos don't perform as well as you need them to, which is the start of what kind of ruined my relationship with being creative and making creative content because the fact that I was relying on it for not only for a job, but that it was directly con connected to my internet persona and growing followers and subscribers was something that 
was just always the main objective. Grow it bigger, make more money, get more views. And so why do I bring this up? I don't know. I think that part of my love for content creation was born out of Twitch. It wasn't because I was making YouTube videos about video games when I was in college and that caused me to continue making commentary videos. It was the way that I talked to a chat and the way that people responded. And that's what I loved so much about content was the audience and creator interactions. But the more that I was stressed about the numbers, the less that I wanted to interact with the audience and the less that I wanted to look at what people said because you become more detached from your audience and people treat you less like you're the person in front of the camera <laughs> and you're just like kind of this the thing in a box and people watch you for entertainment or to put you on in the background while you talk and so suddenly you go from april streaming 137 hours in a month but then on my way out of my parents place i start streaming less and less it goes down to 34 goes back up to 50 but then all of a sudden november december i just stop and i don't like it anymore I just lose, I lose the kick to get back on the stream and go out there. And even though every time I came back to stream, maybe I would have like 500 people watching or whatever, I would get tired in like a couple hours. Like I would just run out of the gas before I would stream for eight hours plus sometimes a night. And I would just continually stay up late at night in my parents' basement just wanting to be on stream with the chat and not wanting it to end and i miss how much i loved doing that i i miss how much i waited every single day for me to finish eating dinner with my family so i could run downstairs or upstairs or wherever and stream for the rest of the night to the audience and that was my favorite thing to do ever and i think looking back i don't think about all the stress that I still had. There was always something that I was super anxious about since I started YouTube and that problem continued to grow. But when I look back, I do see a lot of what I really loved and what really made me happy because it was these people that I would interact with every night and I, I fed off of it so much and it was such a big part of me. And back then, again, if you asked me what I would rather do full time, I would tell you I'd rather stream full time rather than make YouTube videos, even though YouTube was supporting me so much more than streaming was at that time. And I talked about this for way too long. I'm hoping that I edited it down to not be boring. But I talk about all of this because I want to make some sort of effort to return to what those days of streaming felt like and i don't think i'm gonna go back to twitch because i don't know it's just been so long since i've streamed on there that i don't feel like it's the best way for me to reach people but i think that i might use he said us as a way to maybe try streaming again whether that is doing live you cringe you smoke with the audience or listening to new music friday or looking at funny internet stories and just watching like funny little videos and maybe uploading stream clips to a channel also and start leaning more on how much I love interacting with a chat and people watching in real time. So I don't know if that was an entertaining video. Let me know what you think. If you were someone who used to be a part of my streams, um, let me know. I was at some party and someone came up to me who used to be a part of like the original streaming chat I had who used to send stuff to my P.O. box and I remembered her name and all of this stuff. It was crazy. And it feels like a different time in my life that I just miss a lot. And even though it might never be the same, because maybe I will stream and it'll continue to be a group of, you know, a bunch of random people. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I might as well try. Anyways, let me know what you think about this video, whether you like the personal videos more or if you want to see me cover stories that I find funny. I know some people want me to completely not make videos about any drama adjacent stuff, but I think as long as it's like lighthearted or as long as I'm interested in it, I might still explore those things. But I want to use this channel to just think of video ideas. And even if it's something like this, where it's not like this super engaging, funny story I have to tell. It's just like me reminiscing. It's still something I've always wanted to create and look back on, and I'm happy that I did because I think it was a cool time 
in my lifespan as a content creator. And content creation is a lot different now for me, as you can tell. And I don't know what role it is going to play in my life moving forward, but I need to continue to put my videos out there and explore where I want the path to lead me. I've also been playing a gross amount of NBA 2K24, and I think it would be really fun to stream that and maybe even play people in the chat in the game which would be kind of funny. But I don't know, this video, I'm just putting it out there just in case people are interested in the streaming thing again and to talk about why I stopped doing it in the first place and to you know remind the people who did watch those streams that I think about it a lot and I miss it a lot. Um, and if you're in the comments and you have thoughts or memories or whatever, tell me because I would love to chat about them. That's the video. Let me know what else you want me to talk about on this channel. Dev and I got the new crumble cookies flavors, so I want to edit that together and upload it soon. There are a lot of other videos that I've been meaning to make, but still trying to get over not feeling anxious about shooting a YouTube video. And that is a hard thing for me to overcome. So thank you for being patient while I do that. Anyways, gamers, have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and hopefully I will see you soon. Bye. When it comes down to like what we like what I do on this channel and like how much you guys take with you and like take seriously and stuff like if you know anything like he said us you know what I'm saying?